Hello friends, Martin here and welcome to the second part of our World Creator series. This time we will be focusing on creating textures for your awesome generated landscapes that we did last time. So let's get to it. First off, if you haven't done the first part of this tutorial, I highly recommend it because we will be continuing with this model we generated last time. So just fire up your file or you know, you can go to my Patreon profile, become a patron and simply download it along with other bonuses. Uh, shameless plug over and let's start texturing. All right, switch to this texturing menu up here and right away add a new layer with this button. On this layer, you will be able to stack up various textures and of course, you'll be able to create more of these layers and activate or deactivate them at will which we will do a bit later. Right now, name this layer Rocks and click here on this Add button. A menu like this will pop up and if it's the first time you're using World Creator for texturing, you will probably have to click here to download some of the default textures the software provides. You can always import your own textures or images from other texture banks like Polygon or Megascans, but we're gonna be just fine with the default ones right now. Click Apply Assets and you're good to go. Once you have the database downloaded, you can simply click here on the World Creator button and choose your texture. For this first one, we will go with this Cliff 02, click Add and Close, and this gives us a great color to the whole thing. But once you zoom in a little, you'll start to see some problems occurring, uh, like this excessive tiling of the texture. To prevent this, let's actually have a look up here at this general tab. In this menu, you can find several very useful options. First, definitely check this triplanar option, which will correct some of the stretching on the vertical slopes of the terrain. See? And then to quickly get rid of the visible tiling, you can check this eliminate tiling option here. When we zoom out, we can see that the problem is somewhat solved, but our texture still doesn't look too good. Unfortunately, there's only so much we can do with this eliminate tiling feature. So the rest we will have to hide through some layering of different textures. Now name this texture rock 01 and you can, for example, play around with this tile size option. But other than that, you can leave it as it is. Afterwards, simply hit add again, navigate into the world creator texture folder and choose this other cliff texture called cliff 01. Now, each time you add a new layer, you are not limited to just having it cover the whole terrain, of course. Uh, World Creator has some great tools with which you can choose how the various layers will be distributed across the terrain and blended together. For this cliff texture, let's actually use a feature that is relatively new to World Creator, which is Flow. Just check it here, adjust some setting, set the low range to something like 2.2, and the high range to 21. The smoothness is fine at 1.2 and immediately you can see that our texture got applied into various crevices simulating the flow of water across the terrain. It still doesn't look too realistic but that's mainly due to the still visible tiling and the fact that the new texture is much brighter than the previous one. You can always adjust that here in the brightness settings. Okay, moving on, let's actually create a new layer now and call it grass. Now the quote-unquote secret to fixing this tiling issue we have is to add enough layers with various distribution filters so that we basically cover the tiling. Uh, let's add a new texture, like this grass 02. We can play around with the brightness a bit, make it about 0 0.84 and now let's change the distribution. A very important filter here is called cavity, which I'm sure you all know. It's all the little recesses, ridges, crevices in our terrain, which we want to fill with our texture. However, there are two settings you might not be familiar with. Here we have concave setting, which basically fills all our carves. And then we have convex, which fills the peaks. Now, I'd be lying to you if I told you that I always knew how the result's going to look based only on this description. I actually read it in the software's manual. Uh, but one thing that always works is try it out, see what you like and go with it. In our case, let's choose 
this concave option because grass probably has a better chance to grow in the natural recesses of the terrain rather than on peaks where there is a lot of sun and harsher terrain. Besides, it looks better. You can also play around with the number of steps and step size, which changes the size of recesses it takes into account. In our case, 3 and 9.2 will do fine. Also, you can change the strength of the effect. Let's make it 7. You can enable the flow here as well, though in this case it will make only a small difference. Uh, set the lower limit to 1, high limit to 20 and play with the smoothness. Uh, the default value is quite fine actually. But as I said, it's not too important once you have the cavity filter on. The distribution filter called height is another one you will be using often when making textures in World Creator. It simply limits how high a certain texture reaches. Often you want to have lush green grass filling valleys, but you probably don't want it to go all the way to the mountain tops. That's what we'll set here, making the lower limit something like minus 600 and top limit to be something around 370. Also, don't forget to use this height smoothness and set this right value high to about 90. Otherwise, you'd have a sharp line where the texture ends. This way, the blending will be much smoother. All right, time to add some lush green grass. Instead of adding a new layer, you can actually duplicate an existing one and then go here, click change and choose a different texture from the library. Then you have all your previous settings already active and you can just change them around. So go ahead, play with the flow, set the low number to 0.6, high value to 20 and leave smoothness as it is. Don't forget to deactivate the cavity setting for this one. Also let's set the lower limit of height to minus 500. High limit so that it doesn't reach the top of the mountain and height smoothness again to something like 40. You can of course change the layering order of the textures. So let's push our first grass over this second one. To do that, just push this arrow here. For this one, let's also try the slope filter, which limits the application of your texture only to surface under certain angle. Playing with the high value, I found that about 28 is good for me in this case, limiting the angle to almost only horizontal surfaces. Cool, it's starting to look good. Uh, let's actually lower the brightness a bit though. Add a new layer and use Grass 04 as our texture. You can go to this brightness settings, lower it to 0.9 and also lower the contrast to 0.7 to have this slightly drier looking texture. This one I want to mix into the recesses over the darker grass. So let's again choose concave cavity filter, four steps with 10 step size, that's all fine. Also limit the height to about 200 meters and raise the smoothness to 30 and 80. If you can't really hit the target with the color tone of your layer using brightness and contrast, you can always go here to the shade option and play around with that. Also after this change, let's go back to the cavity settings, lower the steps to 3, step size to about 6.4 and strength of 3.8 will do. Now for the final grass layer, duplicate our existing layer and raise the contrast a bit, uh, 0.84 will do. Deactivate the cavity and instead use flow option with 1.4 for the low limit and 20 for the high limit. Then limit the height to about 100 meters since we want to have this texture in the valleys of our terrain. Of course, use some smoothing for the height. In the end, give it a bit of yellowish tint in the shade menu. And with that, we completed our grass layer. All we need to add now is the snow layer. For that, create a new layer, call it snow and add a texture to it. Let's not get fancy here and choose this default snow one. 
Uh, this time, instead of the concave cavity, we will be using convex cavity, since we want the snow placement to be on the peaks instead of the recesses. After some experimentation, I found that setting steps to 1 and step size to a larger number, like 12, looks fine for me. Also, slightly lower the strength to about 4.5. We don't really want to have the snow all the way down in the valley, so let's raise the lower height limit to 450. And also the top limit to 700 to cover the mountain peak. Don't forget to raise the smoothness to 70 and 70 for the high limit as well. Also, I don't want to have my snow covering the vertical slopes, so let's check this slope option and limit the number to about 15 and 90. Now all that's left to do is to add the snow cap to the mountain. To do that quickly, just duplicate your snow layer, deactivate the cavity option to none, raise your lower height to 500, top limit to 850, and in the slope settings choose 60 to the high limit. Let it all calculate for a bit, and here we go! We have created our first material in World Creator. Now all you need to do to get your texture into Blender is to go here to the export dialog, click on the texture tab and export your color map. The rest of your textures we exported last time, so if you want to know more about exporting, just have a look at my previous World Creator tutorial. Now just click export and let's quickly jump into Blender. Here all you really have to do is just to open your shader that we set up previously and change this texture to our color map. Then plug in the color map into the base color of your principal BSDF shader. And to see everything better, let's raise the strength of the environment lighting here. If you want to have more contrast in your material, you can use this mix RGB node and combine your color map with the ambient occlusion map using the multiply option. In the end, I just quickly adjusted the setting of my lights I repositioned them, rotated them and made the mountain pop. I also rotated the whole model a bit. And in the end, I actually used an HDRI image for the overall lighting. You can see me plugging it here. And obviously this makes a huge difference. Uh, of course, this is too intense now, so I lowered the strength. But that's actually everything I did except for adding one more sunlight uh, with a bluish tint to fill in the dark spots. And with that, you can render your result just as we did last time and marvel at what we were able to create in just a few minutes. And that's really what World Creator is all about. I love the speed with which you can generate and texture virtually any terrain you want. The only downside is that the World Creator abbreviation WC stands for toilet. So, yeah. Anyway, if you want to support my project as well as these tutorials, consider becoming a patron over at my Patreon site. There's a lot of extra content there, some exclusive tutorials and also project files for these tutorials. I actually added the whole World Creator project file from this tutorial there. And that's it for today, my friends. See you around, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. Have a great day. Martin out.